world, Shelly here, and I cannot believe we are at the final day of the Foundation Mega Fest. 15 days in a row of Foundation reviews. As always, inspired by Thetela's 15 Days of Foundation. I will link her down below if you are unfamiliar with her. But this is it, day 15 of our 15 days. And today I'm going to take a look at a foundation from Givenchy. This is the Photo Perfection Fluid Foundation SPF 20. This retails for $51. And on Sephora's website, it's getting about almost four and a half stars out of five with 923 reviews at this point. You get 0.8 fluid ounces of product in this glass bottle. So just shy of the typical one fluid ounce. So this is a pretty pricey foundation. It only comes in 12 different shades. I've got this in the lightest shade, which is shade one perfect ivory described as light with a neutral balance of pink and yellow undertones. So this company is not cruelty free. They do test on animals and there is added fragrance listed in the ingredients for this foundation. So if you have a skin sensitivity to added fragrance, note that we will see if it actually has any kind of scent or discernible scent, uh, a fragrance you can smell when I pump it out of the bottle. This is supposed to be medium to full coverage for normal combo or oily, oily skin, though I did read a lot of people mentioning that this works well for dry skin. The finish is supposed to be natural. It's a foundation with excellent coverage and a completely natural result for a smooth, even, luminous, and fresh complexion. Inspired by digital imaging, Photo Perfection Foundation recreates the perfect skin quality obtained with touch-ups while remaining completely natural. So the way your skin looks when you Photoshop it or apply a filter, that's what they're saying this foundation will make your skin look like. The Skin Perfector Complex acts as an eraser to minimize the look of imperfections. Lighting Complex adjusts the luminosity to the contours of the face to blur irregularities, imperfections, and fine lines as if by magic. I love magic. Magic is fantastic. So if this is magic, I'm happy. This is formulated without parabens, but like I said, there is added fragrance. So if you're sensitive to that, be aware. Now let's take a look at this shade swatched against some others in my collection. Alrighty, let's swatch. First up is today's foundation, the Givenchy Photo Perfection in shade one, Perfect Ivory. Second is the Derma Blend Smooth Camo Foundation in shade Linen, Zero Cool. Third up is the MAC Studio Fix Fluid in NW10. Fourth is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place in 1C1 Cool Bone. Fifth is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place in 1C0 Shell, which I think is a lot closer to the Givenchy. They are very, very similar shades. And last up, I've got the Too Faced Born This Way in the shade Snow. The packaging is very luxurious looking. It's a glass square bottle, but my favorite part is the cap. Do you see how it's like got some like hollow going on inside of there? I don't know how well it's picking up on camera, but the pattern inside has sort of holographic shift in there and that's pretty cool. We do have a pump. You know, I kind of expect nice aesthetic touches from a product like this because not only are you paying a ton of money for it, but the, so Hubert de Givenchy, the guy who this brand is based on is a fashion designer and you know, that's, that's a, I expect a good visual aesthetic from a source that is all about visual aesthetics. So that's just my own personal take on it. I do like the cap. Now that I sit this on the bottle without the cap, it does look like a very small bottle. We're, we're about 0.2 ounces shy of a typical one ounce foundation bottle. Now I am starting out with a 43 year old face. I've got some sun damage on the side of my face, sunspots texture that I like to cover up. I do have enlarged pores, especially here on my cheeks. 
they get a little cranky on my chin, my nose, center of my forehead. I have some texture in between my eyebrows that, that likes to cause trouble and I've got fine lines, my smile lines, and I've got some forehead lines that foundation likes to settle into and I do not like foundation to settle into them. So all of this magic that's supposed to be happening, I hope it starts happening on this face because I've got some things that I like to cover up. My skin is normally normal to dry. In the winter, it's a lot more dry than it is this time of year. I'm pretty well normal at this point, though I am susceptible to dehydration if anything in the ingredients are drying or dehydrating. So we will see, my face will show us by the end of the nights if this is drying or not. I'm gonna go in on one half of my face with a sponge. This is the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. I've got the e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush for the other side. We'll see if one way or the other has a different sort of application. And let's check this stuff out. Fairly thick. Not super runny, not super thick, but not super runny either. I've already cleansed, moisturized, sunscreened my face. I did not yet prime, let's prime. This is the Strivectin line Blur Factor. I absolutely love this stuff. I find that it does help extend the wear of makeup, especially in terms of keeping my foundation from getting textury on my face. It does a very nice job to fill in lines like my smile lines, which is why I concentrate it over here on them and then I blend it out to the rest of my face. One of these days, I will remember to put my ears on first. This foundation definitely has a discernible scent. It smells very perfumey. On one coat, I feel like we are getting pretty light coverage with the sponge. It is blending out very nicely, but I can still see just about all of my sunspots and imperfections poking through. It's balancing redness pretty well, but not completely. I still have some redness on my chin and around my nose that is poking through. It's sitting a little bit wonky on my nose, but we may be able to settle that down with a brush. Let's yeah, this is, this is fragrance. Seriously fragranced. Why are all the bougie high-end brands so smelly? Like they all have to smell like perfume. Why? I think the coverage is a little bit better with the brush. I would say we are still at pretty light coverage using the brush. I've got a little bit more product left from what I originally pumped out. So let's just see if we can even this out a little bit and get a little bit more coverage where I got my problem areas. This does build well on itself, but I feel like for something described as medium to full coverage, I'm not sure what planet they were on when they were measuring the coverage because I think this is like a high light coverage. I don't feel like this is even medium coverage. I see all of my sunspots and in some spots redness, like the redness from wearing my glasses this morning is not being covered up. So I don't think this is medium to full coverage. I think this is light to maybe medium coverage. Maybe you could get it there. I feel like I'm getting very slight blurring of texture and pores, not really a lot of blur, just a little bit of blur. It's sitting a little bit strangely on my nose. Like I said, I'm not getting the coverage that I want. My chin still has some redness coming through. My nose has some redness coming through. My, in between my eyebrows has a little bit of redness coming through. And I'm not in love with the finish. It claims to be a natural luminous finish. I don't see any luminosity. It kind of just looks almost dry. It's not quite matte. It is a, a satin finish, but minus any kind of luminous reflect. And in some spots, it just kind of sits on top of the skin. So I'm not, 
I'm not in love with the finish of this guy right now. It feels a little bit tacky. I think I will have to set this with powder. However, it does feel very lightweight. It does not feel heavy on the skin at all. So that is good. Let's take a look at the time. It is 2.38 p.m. I will be back with my full face in just a minute. Okay, here we go. I did not have trouble blending concealer onto this foundation. I'm wearing the Too Faced Born This Way concealer, but I'm not in love with the finish. I did end up setting this with a powder for two reasons. One, it was a little bit tacky and I figured I was going to have trouble blending powder over it. Number two, this, found, this powder tends to give a little bit of a life raft to foundations that I don't like the finish of. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish and I was hoping it would kind of put a little oomph into the foundation and I think the foundation is just kind of sitting on top of the skin in some places. The powder was not able to salvage that and then I did have a little bit of trouble blending my blush and bronzer on top and I'm using products that I'm familiar with very, I've used these in many, many, many videos. This is the Balm Desert Bronzer and the Kevin O'Quan Neo Blush. And you know, it's just a little patchy, especially on this side. My bronzer is just a little bit patchy and it would not blend out nicely. So I had a little bit of trouble there. Then I was like, you know, I was gonna stay all high end because it's a high end foundation, but then I'm like, Master Chrome never ever fails me. This stuff will bring life back to anything. And even the highlight. It looks like the highlight is sitting on top of the foundation which is sitting on top of the skin. So products really aren't blending super nice on top of this foundation. I love this highlight. It 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 just it I don't like what's not going on underneath it. Everything looks just a little dry, a little flat, and a little bit textury. Even though it's blurring texture, it's hard to see. The texture is not the texture of my skin that I'm seeing. It's, it's like texture of foundation on top of my skin. So at a conversational distance, I don't think it's very noticeable. Like I'm looking at my monitor here and I think it looks decently nice, except that my bronzer does look pretty patchy, but I'm not in love with the with the finish right now. That's that's kind of where I'm at with it and we will see maybe it will all sort of melt into my skin a little bit as it settles down and sits on my on my skin for a while, but that's where we are starting out. I will be back in a few hours with a daylight check-in, then I'll come back at the end of the night and give you guys my final thoughts. 12:31 a.m. I think I forgot to do the daylight check-in. Was this today or yesterday? I've been editing videos literally all day long and I'm pretty sure I forgot. <laughs> so I apologize for that, but let's take a look in the mirror now, shall we? You know, honestly, I don't dislike this as much as I did initially. I think it did settle into the skin reasonably well. It's still not my favorite finish, but considering, let's see, how many hours has it been? We're almost at the 10 hour mark now. It held up okay. It, it's, it doesn't look awful. My chin is breaking up a bit and my nose is breaking up a bit, but it hasn't worn off as much as a lot of other foundations do. My blush bronzer highlight are still intact. It is caking up a little bit around my nostrils where I've got dry patches and my nose is pretty polka dotty like it was initially, same trouble spots. It's breaking up a little bit in between my eyebrows, but overall it doesn't look horrible. It just doesn't look great. It looks like I've been wearing it for 10 hours. So, you know, those, these are just the, the kinds of foundations that it, it's just not my cup of tea. I'm, I'm not going to ding it for the fact that I don't really like the finish, 
but I, I do think it's got some issues with application. It doesn't seem to have settled into my lines with the exception of my very deepest lines. It's not looking good on my pores. It is slightly drying. It's not too bad. It's not too uncomfortable. It is pretty lightweight. I'm just not a super huge fan of it. So if I had to give a grade to the Givenchy Photo Perfection, I'm gonna go D plus. I think it's below average, which is where the D comes in. I don't think it's absolutely horrible, which is why it's on the plus side rather than lower. It's not a failure. I mean, it wore all day. I just don't really like it. And that's what I got. So <laughs> there you have it. D plus for the Givenchy. It's too, it's, it's too expensive to be so eh. That, that's my, that's my final, final answer, final answer. That wraps up the Foundation Mega Fest. Believe it or not, that still did not clear out my bin of foundations and I wanted to get my hands on the new CoverGirl foundation, but I was not able to get my hands on it before I left for Ireland. So I will have that when we get back and I will have, I'm looking in my bin right now and I see at least four more high-end foundations in that bin and I see Oh, there's at least four drugstore foundations in my bin. So we got more foundation reviews coming and of course there will be more released because it never ends, which is good because I love foundation and I'm still searching for the number one holy grail because even though I've got some favorites, nothing has scored a 100% and I'm just looking for my holy grail. Just gonna keep on looking, keep on looking. There you have it. If you guys have suggestions for foundations you would like me to check out, please leave them down in the comments below. Let me know what you thought. Have you guys tried this one? Let me know. Did it work for you? If it did, I would love to know. Oily skin, combo skin, dry skin, maturing skin, what's your skin type? What, you know, let, give us those, those details and feel free to do that on any foundation review because I'm specifically only able to test what my skin does. I would love to hear your experiences with all different skin types and skin tones and issues and whatnot. So I hope you guys enjoyed this foundation mega fest. If you did, please give me a thumbs up down below. It helps to grow my channel. And as always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. I will have the foundation spreadsheet updated on geekoutofwater.com very, very shortly with all of these mega fest foundations and thanks a lot. I appreciate your time and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.